Welcome to London, Judy. Uh, it's really great to have you here. Um, we're here today to talk about your book, The Seven Secrets of the Universe. Um, so really, my first question to you is, what really inspired you to write this story? And what's the story about? OK, thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, I was, I have two little girls. They were seven and 10. And we've just read lots of books, Harry Potter and all kinds of books over all the years. So they have a very magical upbringing. So we just like creating stories and telling stories together. And um, their mom started meditating when they were quite young. And um, somehow what I was learning in meditation, I was always telling them in story form. So it was kind of good for me to be able to simplify and make it interesting, not teachy-preachy with them. And then one day we just got the idea to write a story. We were in Beijing, actually, where they were living, because they went to live with their dad, and they were going to an international school. And one day I said, hey, instead of reading Harry Potter, let's write our own book. And they said, oh, OK. <laughs> and um, so we sat down, and then all the characters came out. And they were kind of characters from their school. So they're at this international school. They were 7 and 10. And so we have uh, Solomon from Ethiopia, and then we have Mei Ling from Vietnam, and we have Raj from India, and then we have Emily from Canada, and Emily from Halifax. And Emily was, it was a bit of a, a, a dilemma because the little one, Lucy, kept saying, but I'm Emily, but no, she was the little girl. <laughs> and then the big one would say, well, you can be Emily. So she's really a composite of the two girls, and they can both see their own character in there. But at a certain point in the writing, they said, Mom, I think she's more like you. <laughs> the main, this main 15-year-old character. Anyway, so um, we created the characters together, and then the point was to kind of reassure teenagers about the state of the world. So we did this 10, 15, 11 years ago maybe, and then they came home for Christmas last year, and I found this little manuscript, and it wasn't even on the computer, it was like in a file folder in the back of the filing cabinet, and I pulled it out and I read it to them at Christmas, and I said, does this have legs? Do you think this could be anything? And they were then 16 and 19, or 17 and 20, something like that. And they said, yeah, you bet. Go for it, Mom. So then we had a conversation to fill in more details and plot and character and all that. And then it became, instead of for 7 and 10-year-olds, it became for 15-year-olds. So we kind of upped the ante on the book and had to make it a bit more, in, I don't want to say intelligent, but a bit more thought-provoking. Um, so that was how it came about. And so they basically have been hanging in there with me for the last year and a half. I've been writing, I give it to them, they tell me how this wouldn't work for a teenager, or how this is preachy or teachy, or how you gotta, you gotta work harder, Mom, to make the kids want to participate in this. So all the motivational aspects they kind of took care of, and they kind of axed anything that wasn't a teenager-like. So I had a lot of axing. I wrote it ten times. Whoa. Yeah, and if I told you this story, I got I got a happy face on the manuscript every time I wrote something that was showing kind of a key message rather than telling it, and I got four smiley face faces in 200 pages of manuscript. Wow, that's really interesting. So you've never written a book before that? Is this no. the first time you've written a book? It's the first time. Yeah, and it just, you know, I can't say that I was really committed to writing a book. I was committed to giving some legs to this little story we had. And then as it seemed to turn into something that kind of made sense, and a few people read it, said, oh, yeah, it's great, the way friends do, how supportive, you know. And then I thought, no, no, I think really this could make sense. And then it just seemed to turn into a book. I didn't set out to write a book, but I set out to tell the story that we had concocted in Beijing together. So that's how it started. So we've got um, Aaron and Nicholas here as well, who have read the, the full book, I believe. And uh, what I'd like to know, um, Aaron, is what did you really like about this book? Yeah, when I started on um, reading it, I really, at first, as, as I read the prologue, I was totally interested in it and because of the characters that Judy brought to life. And I could just, as I've read like the Harry Potters and all of that, and the, um, I could see the similarity in that there are not many books that I'll be interested in unless it really brings to light, brings imagery to life in my mind. And as soon as I read the prologue, I said, yeah, I definitely have to read the rest of it. Um, and it talked about um, the keepers of the earth and so on. 
and I don't want to give too much away. You can but do it's a bit, <laughs> yeah. because I didn't say much so, about the story, so, but anyways. Yeah, and um, yeah, just, it really, um, I realized that this book was quite, it was quite different from anything I ever read, because um, I could see where Judy was taking it, and I could tell that it was going to be a story that um, was going to be different than, more different than anything I ever read. And so that kept me reading page after page. How was um, it different for you? When was it different for you? I think f what I saw when the characters definitely were totally different from anything, from um, any other character I've ever read about. Um, the plot is totally different as well. Um, and it's quite thought provoking because it makes you, although it's a story you're reading, you're, it's like you're tuning it in your mind already. It's like you're um, thinking about every, you're like the character, each character you read about in the book. Um, you kind of put yourself in their situation as well. And you, it's like if you become the character, each one. Um, you know, like in the Harry Potters, you think, oh, I want to be Harry. But in these <laughs> ones, <laughs> in this, you're like, I, I could be any of these characters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you could relate to each character and what they're going through. And that's what is quite um, interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So and it's not n never a bland moment, I think. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what about you, Nicholas? What did you really like about the story? Um, just like Aaron did, I felt a certain relatability with each of the characters in, in that um, I didn't actually think that there was these four characters. I felt as if I was participating in this journey myself. And, you know, um, it's so well written, you know, that the, the imaginative and visual aspect of it is, it just really brings it to life. And um, I really liked the adventurous aspect of it, you know. Um, and, you know, while I was just reading through the book, you know, um, thoughts about what, what I was going through uh, in my life, it just seemed to melt away. It's like, you know, when a good story grips you, nothing else matters. You're just involved in that and you felt so much at peace. It was like through the adventures of these four characters, I was able to find peace in myself as well. I felt totally detached from my own problems and I was finding the tools to sort of move on from them, from these four characters. And yeah, I relate to all of these characters because I see this, the same traits that are overwhelmingly visible in them, in myself. <laughs> Be it Raj's pompous arrogance or <laughs> Mailing's uh, insecurity, um, Emily's wanting to fit in, you know, or, or uh, Solomon's sort of caring over responsibility, sort of worrying, you know. Um, I see those negative aspects, but at the, at the same time they go through this sort of focusing through um, this process of, of meditation in the library and you know it transforms you can see how they become better people and that is really a wonderful flavor I'm, I'm, I've enjoyed this book so much really thank you for oh, writing it so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> could I have been one of your kids <laughs> if I want to hear the story I think, again <laughs> I think Nicholas maybe you were <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the it's kids get an assignment. It's not all about sitting in the library, yeah. but the assignment involves they have to discover these seven secrets. And they're not given the tools to do that, except they meet a hypnotist at the beginning of the book who gives them this assignment. And the only tool they have is that she hypnotizes them, or they think they're hypnotized. So they've gone through this relaxation process that she took them through on stage. That's the only tool they have. And when she gives them this assignment, they say, but how, how are we supposed to find these secrets? And she said, well, it will require intention and concentration. You and figure trust. it out. Yeah. And so then these kids essentially have to figure yeah. out, okay, well, like, what did she do with us? And yeah. okay, let's try that. And did that work? And it doesn't initially, and it doesn't always. But eventually, they get better at it as a method for discovering something. And then it's very imaginative what they discover each time. And then they have to figure out, what does that mean? Well, that mm. was a cool experience. But what does that mean? Mm. And well, how, does that, how yeah. is that relevant to anything? Yeah. I think so do, do you think this book can help you, like, from what you say, it's, it helps you transform? 
So it helped you, you know, <laughs> deal with this outer world or outer chaos or also your inner chaos. How do you think it could help young people today? Or what do you think is relevant for young people today in this book? I think um, not only young people would benefit from this book. That's the first thing. That's absolutely I so. think anyone who reads it from 10 years old to, or 8 years old till 99 <laughs> or whatever um, would get some type of benefit from reading the book because I think each one of us have all gone through um, some type of problem or something in our lives. And that's why I think every, anyone who reads it would relate, if not to all the characters, at least to one. And you definitely learn something, as um, Nicholas was saying, as you go through the book, you're kind of figuring out with them as well what's mm -hmm. happening. Um, and you're trying to figure out what they have to do as well. Um, so I think for young people, for anyone, um, they'd get a lot of benefit from it, from reading it, because of the different um, obstacles that the kids face in it. Although it's young people in the book, I think they're just a representation of probably everyone in the world. Um, and the that's teenager what I got. in all of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's what I, yeah. um, when I told you, I, and I, um, I picked up on the characters, I said, each one of these characters is just like a representation of the whole world that mm. you, um, you brought in. And she said, oh, but I didn't realize um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that. But yeah, it is when you, when you read it. And yeah. what are the themes that, you know, the main messages that have come, you know, that are quite important that have come up in the book for you? For me, one is definitely um, mystery. It's quite mysterious, um, so that's definitely a theme. Um, but also adventurous. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, everything that the kids go through in the book, it's something that, um, and I've read a couple of books, a good few books, I like reading. Um, it's something I've never heard about before. Um, and the chapters are quite short, but to the point, and each chapter has a very different, um, the, the names are quite captivating. So like, you're like, oh, I want to read this next chapter. I want to read the other <laughs> chapter. So, and yeah, they're so different. Each, each chapter is so different, but yet it's so short as well. Um, but they learn so much in just that short um, piece. It's like a little few pages, mm -hmm. but they learn so much in just that short space of time. And that's what keeps me wanting to read more and more. Nicholas, um, what did you really like about the, the, the book, the storyline? What really stood out for you? The themes that I'm seeing in this book is that there's this search for truth which is being presented in this book. It's, it's like a self-help book. It's a self-help novel. <laughs> Something that's really novel. You've never heard of a self-help novel before. Something that helps you with self-discovery. And really, I find that what, it's, what Judy has done is she's packaged something like ancient wisdom in a very modern and pretty way that's understandable to the modern person, the lay person right now. So yeah, the theme of self-discovery that each of the characters has to go through using um, wisdom that's universal. It's not just belonging to one faith or one sect or one religion or one arm of spirituality. It's something that when you're reading, you can completely relate to. And you, you just get this feeling, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's right. And yeah, um, I think that's, that's my main theme that I've picked up on. And Judy, what about yourself? What is the <laughs> that's message? Interesting. That's so interesting to hear. Thank you both for coming. That's really sweet. Um, well, I mean, it was meant to reassure teenagers about the state of the world. So there's a lot going on in the book about the state of the world, both externally and internally. And kind of navigating through all of that successfully is really what it's kind of about. So all the big themes are there, the death, and destruction, and mm. disappointment, and self-doubt, and I mean, all the things that happen to all of us. So, but told through an adventure. So that's yeah. nice. The adventure was meant to carry it. When we got an editor to help, I actually hired an editor to, to help me, and she was amazing, Marianne, working with me on this. And what she said is you're trying to do two things that are really hard to do in a book, especially a book like this. She said one is, you know, like the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe Narnia series, you go into the closet, into the wardrobe, and the reader is asked to enter the wardrobe, suspend disbelief, 
and then you're in Narnia. She said, what you're doing is the opposite. You're asking the reader to come out, to come, to suspend, no, to believe. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly how she said it, but you get the difference between, you're not suspending your disbelief, you're revealing belief. So there's something, and she said, the other thing you're trying to do, which is tricky, is you're trying to tell a really good story and convey some very deep wisdom at the same mm -hmm. time. And most books do one or the other well. They either do a bit of a cheesy story and they give you some great principles, or they give you a really great story but a bit weak on the principles. And she said, and you're trying to do both, and her aim was to help us succeed. And, doing both and it sounds like we did yeah thank you that's so that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you very much judy thank you nicholas thank you aaron um and thank you all for watching the video um if you do get a chance to read the book please post your comment um just under this the link of the youtube video with your views feedback anything you'd really like to share um, and if you'd like to know more about the book, The Seven Secrets of the Universe, uh, we're going to be showing you a few more links after this video. Thank you very much.